The legacy of West Virginia's drug crisis is in the children's stories. Do you remember being hungry? Yeah. Yeah. What did you do when you were hungry? How did you find food? Well, the, it's kind of gross, but like we had to usually dig out of the trash can. 14-year-old Serenity and 12-year-old Kaylee have two younger sisters, all four removed from their biological mother. Do you understand what drugs did to your family? Yeah. Yeah. They made them like crazy and mad and like depressed all the time. When she started them, she, she was on them and nothing else. But on a typical day, it would be tough to tell they have this painful history. P-A-R-T-Y, party party is on our side. Where is the party? The Monica party, and Robert Kinder adopted the sisters and then another daughter. Today, they are raising seven children, including two foster babies. The family was first profiled in a Washington Post story, revealing how the opioid epidemic has contributed to a crisis in foster care. The system is overwhelmed. Parents like Monica and Robert are desperately needed. They have fostered more than 20 children over the past six years. This is a tough job you've taken on. Not everyone wants to do it. No, no, they don't. But if I could take more kids, I would. But I know I can't save them all. Tina Williams can relate. We are full constantly. She is a social worker for the Children's Home Society, which provides emergency beds for children who are removed by protective services. It seems like as soon as you discharge one, the computer will flash up notification, you need a bed for somebody else. The organization operates shelters like this one across the state. We try to make it as homey as possible. A central office keeps track of open beds. It's often a daily struggle. It's now 10-15. Mm -hmm. And you just found out what? We are at capacity. All 106 beds are full. Williams, who used to work for the state, was sometimes called in the middle of the night to remove children in dangerous situations. You know, you look at their eyes. Mm -hmm. They're looking at you for hope. What happens if you can't find a bed? Well, I've been in that situation. And I've had to stay with my child at the department. Recently, she told us, a child came to her shelter after spending five nights in a government office. It's the reality. We need facilities. We need foster homes. Billboards along the highway call on families to become foster parents, and many have. But it's difficult. There are struggles at school, doctor's appointments, and just keeping everyone fed. This is a five-pound bag of shredded <laughs> cheese, Monica. Eggs. Some you need eggs. Eggs. How many? I need two. Two cartons two of those, of these. please. You need 72 eggs. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of eggs. Is there something right now that you that you need that you just can't get? A roof. Is it leaking? Yeah. And we've my husband has hatched it several times but it's not going to last forever. Her husband works the night shift as a bulldozer operator in a coal mine. How do you manage the budget? Get what you need, do without. I mean, I've got an old truck, 220,000 miles. I continue to drive. What about your roof? Do you have the money to fix it right now? Not in my pocket, no. I'm saving every dime I can save to do it. The girls share rooms. Above each bed, their stories. I got adopted on June 28, 2019. Chosen and loved by many. Silly, playful. I'm not bossy. I'm, I'm going for leadership skills. What's the best part of this for you, Kaylee? Well, that I actually have a mom that stays, like, kept up with my appointments and my clothing and food and, and one that actually, like, likes me. Each girl chose a new name symbolic of a new beginning. I picked Haven because I knew it was a safe place and I knew this was a safe place. How would you describe a family? Where a parents give you love and care. A home. A home. I think it's the place that you actually find someone who loves you. I mean, my heart, you know, wants to explode right now because I'm so proud of them. And I'm so thankful we were given a chance to give them a second chance. Oh, wow. That's that, wait, that sound bite right there, given a chance to give them a second chance? I got to tell you, guys, <laughs> I do a lot of stories, talk to a lot of people. This one sat with me mm -hmm. and our crew and our producers 
for days. Oh. Mm. These children's stories and the way that they tell them, no child should ever have to yeah. tell no, them. They, no, they should have a bed. Everybody yeah. should have a bed yeah. and a roof that doesn't leak on them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so if there's so much about foster care there, but to reverse engineer it, what are they doing specifically about the opioid crisis, which is causing this? So um, we have another story that's going to air on Nightly News, and it takes a look at what they're trying to do to combat it. And a lot of it is trying to get to these families early, right? No one wants to split up a right. family. Find the family before it gets to this point so children don't have to go through this. That's a big part of it, but also you have the reality that they need foster parents. And now, if anyone yeah. now. is interested in helping in West Virginia or their own state, go to today.com. We've got some information on how you can do that. And also the federal government has to step up and do something. This gridlock has to end because we have real problems in this country that are not being addressed. And this yeah. is one of them. Yeah. Wow. Well, we had a foster Powerful. care crisis in this country <sighs> before the opioid epidemic, yeah. which apparently has exacerbated yeah. it. So oh, wait, wait, what an extraordinary yeah, was, family you met. Amazing. I mean, wow. they're just <laughs> there are angels among yeah. us. Yes. And I mean, what they're doing and dad working the night shift <clears> and <throat> all the I mean, it's just incredible. Yep, They're really uh, stepping up. Yeah, and I these agree. girls, you can see it in their faces. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.